from the Huntington Bank Studio. This is Colts 360. Thanksgiving week and a road game against a familiar foe in the New England Patriots. This is Colts 360. I'm Lara Overton, joined by head coach Shane Steichen. Shane, last game before the bye week. What would a win against the Patriots do for your locker room ahead of the bye week? It'll be huge. Obviously, any time you get a win in this league is big, but to get one before the bye week uh, with four games left will be huge to get to six and seven. Um, it'll be a hell of a challenge going up to New England. Um, they're playing good football. I know they had a tough loss against Miami last week, um, but they've been improving every single week, um, but we're excited for the challenge. From a scheduling standpoint, I mean, it is the latest possible buy. What are the things that you've had to do these last few weeks to navigate for that and maybe make some adjustments? Yeah, I think from a schedule standpoint, the weekly process that we go through, we want to make sure the guys are as fresh as possible. So we've, you know, done some walkthrough Wednesdays, um, had our normal Thursday, Friday practice just to make sure those guys are fresh, you know, going into Sunday. Coming off a loss to the Lions, but early on, really, Moved the ball really well offensively. Anthony was spreading around against the different receivers and, and tight ends. No, you wanted to finish those drives with touchdowns rather than field goals. But when you look at that production that you were able to see, especially from Anthony, the, a lot of those really good plays, unfortunately, negated, you know, due to penalty. But what were the positives that you take away in particular from Anthony's performance? I mean, I thought he did a hell of a job. We were moving the football. Um, he was efficient doing it, running it and throwing it. And again, some of his big plays got called back. So, you know, so a stat sheet would have looked a lot different yeah. um, at the end of the game. Um, but I thought he played well. Uh, moving the ball and was efficient. Hey, you mentioned moving the ball with his legs as well, led the team in rushing. How have you seen him over the course of this season be really decisive, uh, maybe in selective in terms of when he's running it and the contact that he's taking with Yeah, I think we got some of the, you know, design runs where he's keeping it all the way, and then we have some zone read stuff where he's reading a DN or reading a linebacker, uh, but he has been decisive with his reads. Um, obviously, you know, powerful runner, you know, when it's short yardage and down in the red zone uh, when he needs to go get it, uh, he's been doing a phenomenal job with that. And Michael Pittman Jr., even though went to the locker room for a period of time, just get evaluated for an injury, came back, still led the team in receptions and in receiving yards. In fact, he passed Reggie Wayne for the fourth most receiving yards by a Colt in his first five seasons. With as competitive and as talkative as Reggie and Michael Pittman both are, what are those conversations like as Pitt starts chasing him, you know, on some of these milestones? Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, that's, that's a pretty impressive milestone. You always got some good stats for us. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, his toughness, we've talked about it so much, but him to go back in the locker room, you know, and then come back out and do what he did, um, obviously showed the play where Anthony hit him across the middle, boom, pinballed off two guys, you know, made a guy miss, uh, got, you know, 30 yard gain on that play was huge. That just shows his toughness right there. And the plays when he has his number called, um, he always makes the play. What a past two games it has been for Layatu Latu. He had the strip sack on Jared Goff. Back against the New York Jets, of course, got a sack on Aaron Rodgers. What do you attribute to this breakthrough point that he's having really at a critical stretch now of the season from November headed into December? For sure. I think, uh, you know, he keeps working and working and working and you're starting to see it all come, you know, come together. And uh, he's putting in the work uh, and it's, it, it's, it's coming together for him big time. Another stat that I got to go back to you, guys, right here on my notes. He is tied, Layatu is, with strip sacks among rookies this season. First among strip sacks for rookies, so that's pretty impressive as well. Stats continue because Nick Cross, second in the league in tackles, behind only his teammate, Zaire Franklin. I, I've neglected to ask you about Nick Cross on so many occasions because he, his play has been massive. What do you attribute that to from Nick? I think it's the work ethic. He's one of those guys that gets in at 5.30 in the morning. You know, he's always in here work, working, grinding, doing stuff extra after practice. And obviously when you put in the work like that, you're gonna see results on Sunday. And uh, it's a credit to him and the way he's working. Is that something he's done a lot more so this year that he started to implement a little bit more into this portion of, of his yeah, career? Yeah, for sure. I think he was doing it last year, but it's more so, you know, I've seen a lot more this year. Um, man, he's been tremendous for us. A guy also, the work ethic has always been there, especially in battling through what he has adversity wise. Ty Quan Lewis, how significant has it been to get him back this stretch of the season to help reinforce that defensive line depth? It's huge to get him back. Obviously, a leader on our football team, a leader on the defensive line. Great for that room, uh, great for the locker room. Uh, but to get him back this past week and to get him back going forward is going to be huge for us. 
Although you faced and beat the Patriots last season in Germany, what do you see as being the things that might be similar to them as an organization, but the things that are now different under head coach Gerard Mayo? Yeah, I think schematically, offensively, they're different. Defensively, there is some carryover. You know, some of the coaches are still there. So, um, you know, again, it'll be a hell of a challenge going to New England, um, but we're, we're excited for the challenge. Hey, thankful for an opportunity to play a football game. Of course, this weekend coming off of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving tradition that you enjoy the most? Something we look forward to on Thanksgiving? Uh, just being with the family. I think it's great being around the family, getting the family time, having the meals, having the turkey, having the stuffing, having the yams, mashed potatoes, you name it. Um, it's great to hang out with the kids, hang out with the wife and the fam. Always great to hang out with you here on Colts 360. Coach, appreciate the time. Let's go get that win in Foxborough. It was challenging because it was like, well, you know, you're trying to meet this checkpoint by then so you can play here. And, you know, I was just pushing it to like where I was just like, we just have to get this done because I don't like missing time anymore. Coming up, talking it up with Taekwon, the veteran defensive lineman on his rehab return and rallying the defensive front as the Colts look to make a December run. That's next on Colts 360. This season, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is teaming up with the Colts to shine a light on outstanding small businesses. Indy's our hometown, and boosting local business is just one way we want to thank this great city. Go to Colts.com slash Anthem Spotlight to nominate your favorite small business today. Anthem and the Colts, helping Hoosier small businesses score. Enter now for your kid's chance to be Junior Blue at the next Colts home game. Visit Colts.com slash Meyer Junior Blue to enter today. Forte Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, proud orthopedic partner of the Indianapolis Colts. At Forte, fellowship trained physicians and staff provide comprehensive specialized sports medicine and orthopedic care to active patients of all ages. To learn more, visit ForteOrtho.com. My guy, Bro, my guy right here. I'm thankful for this man. I'm thankful for that guy. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my son, Jalen Jones. You see how he's been This my son. Thanks. I'm thankful. Thanks. Thanks. I'm thankful for this guy. Look at him. Come on, bro. Oh yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Thankful for the family. Colts family. Oh wait, let me get behind my mom. Whoa. I'm thankful for these two right here, but you know. I'm very thankful for Tom Manning, someone hey. in this building hey. who doesn't get a lot of love, but he does a lot of work behind the scenes. So I'm thankful for you, Tom. Thankful for my I'm my, my poor, my I'm big man, I'm, and I'm Tim Kane, all my you know teammates and my family. Thankful for my son. <laughs> Back now on Colts 360 with defensive lineman Tyquan Lewis. And Tyquan, we are good friends, so I would rather not talk about IU Ohio State, but I have a feeling you probably just want to follow up on some comments you made last night, or last week, I'd rather, about uh, the Hoosiers going in there to face the Buckeyes with the Big Ten championship appearance on the line, by the way. Buckeyes versus the world. That's all <laughs> I got to say. Hey, I am thankful, I know for one, for you being back on that defensive front. It is so incredible to have you back with that unit. What are you most thankful for on this Thanksgiving week? <laughs> I am thankful to be back. Um, I'm thankful for a lot of things. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for everyone that's helped me get back. You know, the guys in the training room. Uh, it's just a, a moment where you just give thanks for everyone and everything that's played a part in my life. And if I played a part in someone else's life, you know, I'm thankful for, to do that for them too. What's that feeling like for you coming back after missing so many weeks? Uh, I mean, it's a great feeling. Uh, just, you know, just seeing the rehab like process. This one was quite different, I would say. Uh, uh, it, was, it was challenging because it was like, well, you know, you're trying to meet this checkpoint by then so you could play here. And, you know, I was just pushing it to like where I was just like, we just have to get this done because I don't like missing time anymore. You know, I'm running out of time. <laughs> because that was the Pittsburgh game. That was the game when you suffered the elbow yeah. injury. What was different about your approach going into this one? And what was the timeline that they gave you to return? Because you were pretty ambitious about when you wanted to come back. Yeah, so... Uh, I didn't have the surgery right away uh, because of like swelling and stuff, but uh, 
you know, you get the surgery and then you like in my mind, I was like, you know, I could probably do this in four or five weeks, <laughs> like in my mind. But I didn't like I'm, a, I'm an athlete, so it's like, you know, I could do this versus listening to like doctor's orders. You know, it was probably like six to eight weeks. And I was like, I could probably make it in five. And I, was, I circled like the, the Jets game and EV, he goes, nah, we're not making that. And I was like, well, let's do Detroit. Next, <laughs> so next was, one's up. Yeah, and we hit, I remember like hitting like the three, four week mark and I was like, I don't know, it's looking kind of thin there too. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was rough, it was some rough patches, but you know, stay positive and we got to it. You manifested it. How important is the mental aspect of any rehab process? I, it's the most important part of it, you know, uh, just how you approach it, how you attack each and every day. Uh, you know, instead of like just going through the motions or like, you know, not committing to the process, uh, you know, it just it, it just challenge it just changes like your outlook on not just like rehab but life because it's like all right, like take a step back from this moment and you know apply it somewhere else or just different things. So, you know, rehab and all of that goes hand in hand with life sometimes. You have proven your resilience time and time again. You've suffered setbacks. You've come back from season-ending right. injuries. How did you draw upon that previous experience in knowing how you would attack yeah, this well, injury? <laughs> this one was, uh, you know, I knew I had, uh, I was returning, so it wasn't. <laughs> there was you don't hope. have the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you like, you try to do it with like a timeline, and it's like, okay, I don't have that amount of time in order to like get back to like a year like a year's form you know it's like hey let's do we have to speed this one up then you're wearing a brace and stuff so it's a bit different but you know it it, it definitely helps that i've been injured like before and like i know how to approach the rehab saw you wearing the brace of course seemed like that you were relatively on a bit of a pitch count working right, your way right. back in a snap count if yeah. you will uh, how do you feel going into this week against new england feel like you can take on heavier workload this week oh definitely uh you know just like getting back out there, live action, you know, uh, seeing things, you know, just when you play football, you know, like everything comes back after like you miss time on the grass, you know, it, it comes back a little faster. Like now it's just about having accelerated vision, like seeing the play before it happens, you know, just doing things like that, with like foot, footwork and just moving forward. It, it'll come back to you faster. We are able to see the impact that you make when you're on the field, but what impact do you make just being back on the sidelines? Because <laughs> I like to hang out down there on the sideline now, yeah. near, <laughs> down near the defensive line, and the response for you being back from all the guys in your position. Here. Yeah, oh man, those guys, I mean, they make my day, you know. Uh, those guys, they make my world go around, you know. Uh, every day I come to work, I'm just thankful to see them, just hang out with them. And especially on Sundays, you know, it's a great feeling being out there with them. Uh, just the the smiles, you know, I I don't take anything for granted. I cherish every moment. So it's like, you know, I'm always in a good mood. I'm always, you know, I'm just happy. Like, it's, I'm a happy guy. So I'm happy to be with those guys. You are <laughs> a pillar of leadership in that room. You, alongside guys like Grove and Buck, and then you, you see a rookie like Laatu Latu, right. Woody Pay. They have found such consistency in these last few weeks. How proud are you as a veteran in that group of how they have really come on, especially in this last stretch of the season? Oh, it's, it's incredible to watch. I mean, Latu, Quiddy, Dio, you know, they they really, really like work on their craft mm -hmm. and like, you know, just watching them like go out and ball. It, I mean, it, is, it inspires all of us, you know, you want to, expect the best from them and then you're like well let's keep raising the level of play you know it, it creates that competitive nature because it's like a race to the quarterback <laughs> race to the quarterback indeed and it is always a good show when we can put the emphasis on the defensive line and the pass rush and right. we in fact did that with quitty pay as he broke down his sack on aaron Rodgers two weeks ago in that victory over the new york jets I feel like that's what we live for as a defense, you know, everyone dreams about going out there and sealing the game. Especially like the D linemen, like we're out there like hunting, like really hunting, trying to get that sack. Rogers in trouble, can't take a sack, and he does! Quitty pay the exclamation point for the Colts.
You know, we always preach two sacks, kill a two-minute drive, two sacks, end the game. Last play, it's a three-man rush. We're really just trying to keep them in the pocket. And then the O-linemen, they kind of slid to my side. But at the same time, I feel like they didn't think I was gonna like, really like get off and like start rushing. So, you know, I took advantage of that and then I was able to slide inside past the guard that was helping the tackle and then, you know, just steal that side. Two seconds, one second, ball game in New York. Ray said he was waiting for me to, to hit the Wakanda forever, but as I was celebrating, I'm like, oh shoot, I don't know how much time they have left. So I was like, turned around and ran back and then that's when everyone ran on the field and then Grove picked me up and I was celebrating with Latsu and a bunch of other guys. So. Before the game started, I'm like, man, like to get a second against him, a, a legend first ballot would be crazy. I have him and I have Tom Brady, so th those are my favorite two sacks right now. I was gonna get the, the Tom Brady picture painted, and I think I'm gonna get this one painted for sure. You know, the box score doesn't tell the whole story. I thought he played better than the stats would indicate. Because mm -hmm. of all the penalties, I mean, he had four completions of, of 74 yards called back because of flags on the Colts. Still ahead, Matt Taylor bounces from the booth to the studio as the Colts enter the month of November and look to make a playoff push. Five games to go and how the Colts can make it happen in our View from the Booth segment next on Colts 360. Colts fans, be sure to visit the Bud Light Party Zone at Lucas Oil Stadium. The Bud Light Party Zone is above the north end zone in front of the windows that open to the Indianapolis skyline. Bud Light, the official beer of the Indianapolis Colts. Snickers Rookie Mistake Program is back again this season. Learn how you could win Super Bowl 59 tickets at snickers.com slash NFL. It's time now for the Forum Credit Union Question of the Week. When was the last time the Colts had a perfect record in the month of December? 2021, they went 3-0 with wins against the Texans, Patriots, and the Cardinals. Visit the Forum Credit Union Fan Forum section of Colts.com to interact with other fans online. Forum Credit Union, helping members live their financial dreams. Jared Goff out of the gun. Montgomery's is back left. Two receivers go left. That's the boundary. Laporta in motion across the formation to the right side. Backing the throw is Goff. Hitches. Now he's exiting the pocket to the right, and he slips, and he's going to be sacked by the Colts. All the way back to the 46-yard line, and the first man there for the Colts, DeForest Buckner. Back with voice of the Colts, Matt Taylor, for our weekly View from the Booth segment. And, Matt, you're probably like I am. And as a kid growing up in Indiana, you loved David Letterman's top tens. Oh, yeah. Right on the late show. So with five games to go, we're going to do a little top five there you go. of our own. And that is the five things that need to happen for the Colts to make the playoffs. The road starts with your first game of December here right. going to New England. Yeah, I think – Top five, the biggest one, I mean, you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to make the playoffs. You're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs if you don't have good quarterback play. So first and foremost, Anthony Richardson has to play really well for the Colts in these last five games in the season. And I think the last two games, he's played well. Obviously, everybody knows about the Jets game, and I, I thought that was his best performance in a Colts uniform. But even this last game against the Lions, the, you know, the box score doesn't tell the whole story. I thought he played better than – the stats would indicate because mm -hmm. of all the penalties. I mean, he had four completions of, of 74 yards called back because of flags on the Colts. So they need him to play well. They need him to continue to not put the ball into harm's way. That's been good the last two games. No interceptions, so the turnover numbers are down since he came back into the lineup. Um, so those are good things, and you want to see him continue to be involved in the in the run game. You know, he had a career-high 60-plus rushing yards the other day against the Lions. So first and foremost, you have to get stable quarterback play out of the Colts. 
uh, in these last five games of the season. And I have a feeling a lot of these are going to have an offensive right. emphasis to moving forward because one thing we saw against the Lions, not a lot of red zone conversions. Not a lot of red zone conversions, right? They were 0 for 2 inside the red zone against Detroit. That's just not going to cut it, right? You've got to be on your P's and Q's once you get the ball inside the 20-yard line. That's where these games are won and lost. That's what it all comes down to is how good are you on third down both ways and how good are you in the red zone. So I think the Colts have to be really good at you know being creative inside the 20 yard line and quite frankly just you know doing the little things well they had the drop pass at the goal line against the Lions. so if they can be good in the red zone these last five they should have a good chance to make the playoffs. all right number three I have a feeling that this one's gonna go to the ground I think yeah ground and pound I mean you're playing it's it's December football right the the weather is gonna be nasty you've got road games against New York and New England and you have to go to Denver, Denver. that's a huge game for the Colts get Jonathan Taylor going I mean in three of the last four games Jonathan Taylor is under four yards per carry last Last week he had 35 uh, yards on 11 carries. You want to see the offensive line open up some holes and Jonathan Taylor have reasonable big games. I mean, uh, it, it's not like 2021 from a couple years ago where Taylor's consistently ripping off 100-yard performances. If the Colts can get back to that these last five games of the season and have him be the focal point, the fulcrum of the offense, I think they'll be in good shape, but the offensive line has to do their part. And then if you give Taylor a little bit of a crease, we know he can break it. All right, let's wrap it up here with number four and number five to round it out and what we need to see here in this final stretch. Yeah, we Colts. talked about third down. Defensively, the Colts have to do a much better job consistently getting off the field on third down defense. They allowed nine conversions to the Lions. The Colts have allowed the most third down conversions in the NFL through 12 games. So that's imperative. You're not going to go anywhere in the postseason or you're not going to make the postseason unless you're getting off consistently on third down. And then the last one, Lair, number five, I have take advantage of the schedule. Yeah. There's five games to go. The combined record of the last five opponents for the Colts is 17 and 40. Four of the next five opponents for the Colts have three wins or less. And the Colts are 4-1 and one this year against teams under 500, so that's good. They're taking advantage of the teams that they should beat. Uh, but all five opponents, in terms of total offense that are remaining on the schedule for the Colts, rank 23rd or less in total offense the remainder of the way. So the, bet, the next best offense the Colts are going to see this year are the Denver Broncos. So... You know, defensively, again, get off the field on third down and take advantage of some of these bad offenses that the Colts are going to see in the month of December. Hey, thankful for the strength of schedule there, right? Something we're going to give thanks for that the Colts there you should go. <laughs> and will take advantage Fitting. of moving forward. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to you and the Taylor fam. Always good to sit next to you. Look forward to sitting next to you on that fight, flight to Foxborough to face the New England Patriots. You too, you too. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us for this week's Colts 360. Have a great holiday weekend.